let it sit there. Please, 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 let it sit there. Wow, wow. This, this, this is such an experience. experience. But uh, I'd like to thank like like my, my very good friend, friend and brother, and brother Jeff, 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 for making it possible for me to experience this today. And as I was listening and watching what was happening, I told myself, why did I come back to the end of the But I hope I have the video. I hope I can see the video. Because the proclamation is the West so far. And, you know, by the way, you know, this is a great experience. This is a great experience. There is hope for our country. There's just no hope for our country. I just, what they said, even the eloquence, the confidence, the courage. I was just watching. <laughs> you guys, are, you have to teach uncle. Eh? <laughs> you have to teach uncle. But really happy to be here today and to share just a few uh, words of uh, inspiration with you all. I, as I was introduced, I'm the chairman of a UBA group the founder of the Tenet Melo Foundation, chairman of Transcore Group, SOD, et cetera. But for you all, our uh, uh, upcoming uh, leaders, uh, who is Tony Elu Melo? I like all the questions, right? everything. There's nothing more to actually say to you all than to amplify what was said, what has been said already. Who is Tony Melo? Who is Tony Melo? What is the background? Whose son is he? <laughs> So I relate very well to what, what was said by our great, 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 great youngsters. I, I did not become, become a man of the UBA group, group, group because I'm um, someone's best, uh, a, a famous, famous person's son, uh, or because I went to the best school, or because I was the most intelligent. It is um, part of what I want to share with you, my own story, in a nutshell, okay, and in hope that that will further inspire you all as you climb the ladder, as you go from here to the next stage. I was born in Jos. I was uh, born in Jos, and there was civil war, and we had to relocate, you know, from, from Jos to Delta State, where I come from. And we started school, primary school, secondary school, and then I started primary school in Lagos, and went back home, but then Second, finish uh, secondary school at home in Delta State, and then enter university, and from there started working. And you heard the rest of the resume. But a few things helped me in life, which I'd like to share with you, all, which I've also heard from everyone who has spoken. Again, in hope that my own story will inspire you all to become better than Tony Elmer, better than Shegu, better than our leaders today, so that over time, we have a better society that is self-sustaining and sustainable. So a few things helped me, you know. First is, again, all the things that you heard, the hard work. I realized that, you know, again, coming from one's humble background with a lot of aspirations, uh, that the way to there is by being hardworking. So whatever you do, studying at night, night, taking your studies seriously, is all part of hard work. And telling yourself that there are no shortcuts, short there are no other way, way that we get there, get there if you don't work hard. hard. That helped me, me, and I and know that those who do this hard work, even when you, you go to this place, 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 where you are even when you walk in, walk in hard work, hard work help, help. So it's, so it's something, something that me my journey, journey to, to, to so far. So far. I, know, I know that this is a helps a lot. A lot. Again, I have yeah, heard it, 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 being very disciplined, the ability, ability to say to no, no, to things, things that you should do. The, the discipline to do what you need, need to do. do. Very, very, very important. So if you so stay disciplined, disciplined and listening to, to your colleagues, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure, sure that, that most of you are already disciplined. disciplined. So please embrace that. that. Just, just stay disciplined. disciplined. Listen, Listen to your parents. parents. When your parents speak to you, advise you, caution you, it's important. When you're school, principals, 
And when you go up to the university and learn to abide by the rules, this discipline that helps us to succeed. The third thing that helped me is sacrifice. You know, it's even started from secondary school. It's okay to go to university. Everyone wanted to go to university, but to go to university, you need to study. You need to work hard. You need to, you know, those days, my time, they used to call it disco. <laughs> you need to say, okay, you can go to disco. Disco is what people call like party, having fun, etc. It's okay, let me not go to disco. Let me study so that that dream I have of myself in future can come true. true. And so you make certain sacrifices. In strategy, as you grow further in business, they say trade-offs. You know, but at this level, it's about making sacrifices. Just say, I won't do this so that I can achieve this. Because if I spend that time here, it will help me in future. So sacrifice, and today it continues to help and guide us, you know, realizing that it's not everything. Elementary economics teaches us about scarcity, human wants, human needs, insatiable. But because you can't achieve everything, get everything, you prioritize, you discipline, scale of preference, and that drives you. So you, you push certain things out and you do so. So as your friends tell you or somebody tell you to do certain things, and you know, because the God has created us in a way that we know what is good and what is bad. We need to, but it's just that willpower to rise above that. And I like what I said there, that willpower to rise above what is not good and choose to do the one that is good. You're sacrificing something, but in future, you'll be rewarded. So, so sacrifice is extremely important. It helped me in life. Okay, to go to university in Japan, to pass it, and you're not you know, one, 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 or daughter. You have to embrace that, you need to leave it. So, so that, that, instead of you seeing this as a disadvantage, as a young lady said, that you're no one, 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 you should discipline you, talk from you, you make you, you, because you, you, you have that big ambition. You know, and do not be, not be, don't look at life as it's held by, by, by circumstances around you. Around you. Just, just try, try and say, this is the future, future, future of future I see for myself. myself. And, and if you work hard, hard, if you stay disciplined, disciplined if, you, if you make sacrifices that you get, then nothing will stop you. That mindset is good for success, and that is something I want to do. And then, I, it's, yesterday, my daughter, interestingly, had a conversation with people on this type of... Uh, we, in our group, we do like summer uh, vacation or exposure internship. So yesterday they had a talk. And something she spoke to them about, how do you transition from teen to adulthood? You know, and she shared with me when she came back, what she said, I said, oh, that's very interesting. So I'll tell you what I shared with her when she was going to school. So I've told you guys some of the things that helped me, you know, to, uh, today, that helped me get to where I am today. But I also tell you, what I share with my daughter that also has helped her, and also in hope that it will help you all. So when she was going to school, she was in Nigeria, Nigeria when I went to Nigeria, 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 to school, I was eating too. So I, so I started, start, I remember, remember when in the kitchen that day, I sat down with her. She just, she just graduated from the London School of Economics. So I sat down, sat down with her and I said, and I asked her sister, I said, please, I said, you could sit here. Because usually when I talk to her, I try to make sure they all sit together so they can also listen, which is why I wish, I wish my daughters came today. So I, so I sat down with her and I said, number one, I said, I, said, I want you to be yourself. I said, I said, what did I say? You said, be yourself. I said, what do you mean? I said, I'll explain. And I'll explain to you guys. The world you live in, there's a whole world, a whole, a whole world of, I would say, interactions, and you, you have the influence on you is a lot. In my own time, I didn't have these influences. There was no social media in my time. So you go to the live, you read maybe newspaper two days ago. Newspaper two days ago, we study, you take it on, so you go read newspaper two days So, but you I remember when Bob Marley died, we had went to second school, I think, in fact, it was almost after a week or that we were going to be in the first class. So, okay, okay. But now, before I say something, you know, you know, 
So it's good so that it's bad. Influence on you all. And at times, people still have to be coming. You start getting your identity. You start becoming what you are not. And people start starting in a manner that is totally alien to us. Please, our young ones, be yourself. Don't do what you don't want to do or what your parents are doing because your parents are doing those things. Don't do things because you want, you want people to say you say long, you are so shit, you are shit. Forget that. When I, when I was in like, school, I said this every, every time, every time to my people who work with me. There was a time, let me share this, and God sees my heart, it's not because of me, but just in hope that it will inspire you all. When we were in school, I mean, <laughs> That's what they call uh, in university like 011 or 001. <laughs> uh, 010. <laughs> so clearly, you can, three square mil is not everybody that can afford it. So I didn't afford it, by the way. So you just tell yourself, you need, the, when they calculate 50 naira per mil or some 50 kobo, 50 kobo, or it's 2 naira, 50 kobo. So you calculate everything. How many days in, in a term? Maybe 91 days, 90. 50 kobo, 50 kobo, 150, 150 kobo, multiply by this. So you have everything, then maybe small money for your provisions and coke. You, and you have to drink diet coke. You have to drink coke, sorry. You have to, <laughs> so you have to, you have to recalibrate. You have to buy maybe a pair of jeans. You have to recalibrate. So you have like, this food, you go, you go wait. You have eat, maybe you zero, one, one. <laughs> so, so we went we, we through all of that. But I know I look back today and I say, And at times when I look at my judge and my wife, I said, you know, you know at times I try to increase some scarcity in certain experience. So that's because let them, let them go through a certain experience in different ways. So, so, so when we're in school, imagine, imagine some, some of our could have got this way. Then some of our friends had cars on campus. And we, and we did then, there was a prelude, Honda prelude car, just come out to the door. I remember one of us had the one that had a Honda crash back and, and 504. It's like the God, God, the same God created all of us here. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you know, that was the background there. That one day, some years ago, I was here at UBA. One of these, my rich friends, came to see me. And, and every sir, 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 sir. Yes, yes. No, no, I felt embarrassed. I just stopped, you know. I said, and when treated, you know, it's and that, I cancelled him and said, I support, etc. Why did I share this with you guys? Your circumstance today must not define your future. Tell yourself, this is not where I am, this is why, and I will work hard and I will get there. So if you're in doubt, take this story from me today. I was somehow before, you know, take the story and let it inspire you. Say, you will, this my head, this one, this to Nel Melu, I'll be. That is very, very, very important. So be yourself. Is don't seek to over impress friends or anybody. Anyone who does not accept you that. In fact, I told my daughter, I said, there's drugs, there's uh, alcoholism, there's this and that. Be yourself. Anybody who does not want to accept you because you're not that, let the person go. I say you will have others who accept you that way. Because when you read about people who got the real life, life most of the time, it's influenced from, from friends, friends and now even social, social media. media. So let us be strong to say no, no to things. things. Your, your thoughts thought here in school, school, in your scriptures, scriptures your parents, and, and even your greatest is not good. Don't ever do such things because you want to, want to be long or to accept you. Because in the future, future if you stay the course, or stay discipline, and focus on working, working, working make sacrifices, those will come round, round. And you will choose which I want them as your friend. Then, then. So please take note of this. I told her, I said, said no drug drugs. I said, no drug drugs. And I said, said some of us, some of us. I recall the first time I saw, so my daughter, when she finished um, uh, what in my time we call secondary school class five <laughs> after GCSE, <laughs> it didn't come for me to know what it is. <laughs> okay, that is six plus five, 11, 11 grade. So one of their fr friends, the parents invited them to celebrate that they finished. And she's, 
happily sent us pictures of the parents, you know, Hugo parents, and of them, and they were carrying champagne, glass of champagne. Huh? <laughs> I said, that was thought over in my heart. That I said, what was that? Maybe I someone was excited to share. I said, is that I call you a Karen? That is, <laughs> I almost killed my daughter. <laughs> okay, my daughter died on the phone. But it helped her learn certain things also. It helped me realize that while I thought certain things, I also didn't say certain, certain things, and we learned from it. But it has helped even her. And again, everything we say, God has to also bless you. People will listen. And that's why it's good that you're children of God, okay? To learn what is good and what is not good. So whatever your parents tell you, try to listen. You get to the age where you have the freedom. You do, she's graduated, you do what you want to do, almost what, but if you have been groomed and have grown up in a certain way, you don't go too far from that path, even when you have your freedom. And that is why it's good that we would embrace and accept some of these teachings now, so that when we get there in future, you have your latitude, your freedom, you still be constrained, you on your own, discipline yourself. Social media is a major influence. So my children, I, so again, this interaction for me is within my own personal experiences. They, we, <laughs> it's tough, but we, we allow them to accept the social media and they are okay, so you get to get it up and But some friends can allow it, and it's not bad. What is important is let a child know what is good and what is not good. And let a child be thought, because there's a limit to how you can shelter a child. So you all, your parents give you some of you early freedom, don't abuse it. Some of you, your parents don't allow it, don't feel bad, don't feel deprived. In the fullness of time, you have that access, you have that opportunity. So it's important that you are mindful of the impact of social media. Social media can expose you, it can also create problems for you. Because most time what you see on social media is the good side, the good side, the good side. It creates a world of utopia. You start thinking that the whole world is always like this. No. I'm on social media and others on social media. It's not 100% as you see. So please, 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 be guided, be guided be mindful. Remember this and I'm telling you that every, everything you see on social media is not as it is. And, and understand that it, it intrudes. It's it, it, it gets too deep. You, so you get almost in it. So hold back. Just hold yourself back. And the discipline to focus, sacrifice, even when you're writing as a sacrifice, look about it. can be you're spending two hours, two hours on social media. You can turn off for a period you're writing as a sacrifice or you're reading. That's also the sacrifice. But to, to have a future, you must be some trade you must sacrifice, let's let the things go. And that is why discipline is critical for success in life. Discipline. Discipline, discipline. If I'm most times, you told me, I said to most of my people, say, you lack discipline. It's not that you're not well behaved, but there's even punctuality. There are so many things discipline teaches us. So I think discipline is one big uh, mark or credit everyone all should have. Have a healthy relationship with your parents. Have a very, very good relationship with your parents. Parents correct, they nurture, they teach, they show love. They also smack you. Not physically, but you know, smack you where and when necessary. They correct you. It's all because they love you, because they want you to succeed. Most times, it's not your success brings a kind of joy to your parents. Not necessarily to give put food on the table for your parents, but they would like to see that their children are succeeding. More importantly, that they're happy to create a better future, a better society. When I listen to the young I say, why? I wish every parent, every child in Nigeria, in the world, in Africa, would have the opportunity that you guys have here. Because clearly, this gathering is a unique one from what I listened to, to this morning. Very sound words of advice from young people. So keep a good relationship with your parents. You might have, some of you might have very flexible parents. Some of you might have difficult parents like some of us. <laughs> I'm sure my children will tell you that is very, very, very difficult. <laughs> but it is because we love you. Okay, so as you look at things other, or, or tem attempted to see things differently, as well if you have friends who uh, guess most things they want, just know that why are my parents doing this? Because they want me to be a more successful, a better person in the future, to be a good example to our communities and the world, that's why they're doing this. Let me, let me begin to wrap up, because I'll some wrap Q&A, which I am looking forward to, to say that, um, let me share one more, one more. <laughs> so some of you also are at the age where you can choose, not can, you will choose subjects you want to study, courses you want to do. At some point, 
you might have issues with parents. My advice to parents is allow your children as much as possible to but guide them in a way, let them know implication of what they want to study, etc. Uh, but depending again on the parent you have, your parents insist, you too can have dialogue with your parents. You can have dialogue with mommy or daddy, why this? And try to listen to them, let them also listen to you, and through that interaction, you can have a, a way out. I go through this. <laughs> my, I have five daughters. The last one, they just finished the uh, GCSE. We, we always go through this. Some, uh, they get what they want, some I get what But the key thing is um, let's be flexible as parents, you know, and also for our young ones, try to listen to your parents. And instead of getting angry, feeling frustrated, getting depressed, try to interact with them. Ask them, Mommy, why did Daddy, why this? I'm sure you can find a comfortable place. In all of this, always tell yourself that why are they doing this? They are doing this so I can become a better person in society. Or the way they see things. So if you two can help, I think it's always good to learn to dialogue with your parents. And I think parents is encouraged for us to create the room for our children to be able to even say no to us and let's discuss. Well, our young ones, all I've listened today here, uh, I think you all uh, right and strong footing for the future. I want to wish you well and hope that uh, you continue to grow in love, in the spirit of, the God, of God, and that uh, you all will help make Nigeria, Africa, the world a better community for all of us. I'm open to questions and answers, please. No host, but ask anything, ask anything you, you like. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you so very much, sir. Uh, someone, some people are raising their hands already. <laughs> Can I, anyone, right? Okay, so let's give numbers. Eh? Let's see, with this side, eh, this row. One, two, three. Okay, three, that's, uh, then we'll come to this row too. Okay, three, please, go ahead. Your name, your class, and ask any question. Okay, I understand some are shy. They will write down. But what I saw, I don't think there's anyone who's shy in this <laughs> What I saw, I don't know if anyone who is shy. Well, let's hear you, number one. Um, when you were out, from what I know, your parents were also... Your name? Oh, sorry. My name is Agorino Setting Gabriel. I'm university, Afebabala University, Nigeria. I'm in Tonja level. What course? Mechatronics Engineering. Wahala. <laughs> I read about uh, your, um, your parents were also economists, um, entrepreneurs. Yeah. And did that influence you as a child? Is that what inspired you? And also, in 2010, when you were creating your foundation, what were the major challenges you faced creating that foundation? How did you manage it? How did you come to be one of the best or one of the most top 100 most influential people in the world? Okay, thank you. Gabriel, right? No, first is, uh, you know, there are levels of entrepreneurs. <laughs> so, when we say the entrepreneur, they're not up to that uh, level. But yes, my mom in particular influenced me a lot. She is very rugged, resilient, and uh, extremely hardworking. My dad was too, but my mom was at a different level. You know, she's extremely tenacious and never took no for an answer. So I think we imbibe a bit of this. I imbibe a bit of this from, from my mom. Yes, they influenced me. And listen, my dad used to say then that if you earn, if you earn a kobo, you know, if you earn, you know, like our currency, one kobo, if you earn one kobo, you don't save. Now, if you earn a billion naira, you will not be able to save. And that stuck in my brain, and that has helped me to date. That in, I knew at some point that I was in a point of capital formation. And for you to have capital formation, you have to save. Okay? And for you to save, you have to be disciplined. So, because in everything we do in life, there's only competing demands. So, if you have one area to the competing demand for that one area, so you need to discipline yourself and say, I will consume some. And capital formation starts from saving. I will consume some, I will save and therefore to be able to make an investment. And it is investment, consumption does not give you returns. It's investment that gives you returns. So that helped me a lot. My mom's hard work and you see, that determination was also very strong. And I got influenced by both, 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 both of them. And then uh, the second one, what I faced starting the foundation, I think for me, starting the foundation was not as difficult as what I faced doing business, you know, starting business, you know, because business plays a very competitive arena and then you have to be up to it to be able to succeed. For the foundation, uh, I decided that it was time, you know, I was 47 then, 
and I felt that uh, God has been so kind and that at that phase and stage of my life to date, that it would be selfish of me not to help create Morton Elimelos in my own way. I felt that I was a product of luck. Remember, I'm not someone's son or daughter's son, and I was not the most intelligent and not that. So I kind of felt I was a product of luck. And in my own way, I need to help democratize luck. I need to help create opportunities for others. And I felt, how can I create that opportunity? And I thought setting up a foundation that helps to economically empower people, give you $5,000 non-refundable seed capital, sector agnostic, that is whatever it is, so long as it's about entrepreneurship, teach you, mentor you, create opportunity for you, that that was a good way of giving people the opportunity to also surpass what we have achieved in life. So for me, it was more of ambition, it was more of looking ahead and seeing, oh, challenge, okay, which kind of people, because one thing as for a leader, I said to people, when people say congrats on what the Middle Foundation has done, I said, the congratulations must go to my people, the people I work with, the staff who make it happen. It's, a lot of people have money. You can put money on the table. But putting money on the table and have that money realize your aspiration, your ambition, your intent is not so easy. Putting that money on the table and creating a legacy of impact you know, is not so easy. So, yeah, it was, what was important uppermost in my mind, how do we, I look and get the right people who help, who help take this aspiration to the logical end of helping to democratize luck and create economic access for young ones and economically empower people. So that's it. So good and congrats and good luck in your studies. Okay. Good day, sir. Um, my name is Noel Azi. You're, you're what? Who? My name is Noel Azi, and I'm done with my university. You're in so, university too? I'm done. Exactly. You're done already? Yes, sir. And you look so young. Okay. Um, so, sir, I just wanted to know, was there any point in your life where you felt like you wanted to give up and what kind of you know, motivated you to keep going? The answer is yes, all of us. And that is why, if you know, when I was answering Gabriel's prayer, I said resilience, not giving up. You know, it comes up always. You know, you just said, ask yourself, why am I on this journey? Is it even necessary? You know, or do I just take the easy path? So when such moments come, you just consider, do I just give up? And yes, I've been through that. But what helps is, and that's why I was talking of the discipline, you know, staying focused. Looking ahead, you must paint a picture of the future you want to see. You must paint that picture. And so that in those difficult times, you say to yourself, no, no, I won't stop. Because if I stop, I won't get there. And to get there, I need to work hard. And of course, in everything, by the way, young ones, God is a foundation. He's given. He's, uh, he's taken for granted. Because we all are what we are because of God's providence, grace, and mercy. Anything short of that can say. So, but, so with that, you just need to get the hard work, hard work, you know, you know, discipline, staying focused, staying committed. That young lady, he says, she says something. I tried to memorize and I hope he said, if you don't love your work, you know, he said, if you don't love what you do, you know, if, if you don't love it, try to love, he said, if you're not, you know, something about if you don't love what you do, try to love the job. If you're not, if you don't love going to work or something, try to love what you do. I thought that was so profound. There are things that are within our control and things that are outside our control. So I, yes, I, I had, I've been through that. But how to overcome it is to look at that picture and be inspired by that picture. I read autobiographies. I read memoirs. I like, if you see, I was telling my guys when we were coming to on the plane about Steve Jobs, one of the great, greatest leaders of our time. And I said, to, I watch, it's even today, when I'm flying and uh, it's a long flight and I want a movie to watch, I watch Steve Jobs movie. I will listen to Michael Jackson. I watch Michael Jackson documentaries. To date, and I have watched the just movie more than 30, 40, 50 times. Each time I watch it, I learn new things that I didn't see before. And so why do I do so? Because these are guys who, so the kind of future I see, even today, as I see the future, I like, I'm inspired by what they have done. And I want to learn from people like that. I like to see just, how did a human being come up with all the things he came up with? Where were we? Where were we sleeping? We didn't do, how come nobody thought about it? So I see that as a different human being, and I want to learn more. I want to learn the thought processes. What, how was he thinking through things? And so at times, even today, when I'm in a difficult situation, I just pause, and I say, how would this leader have reacted to this? How would this person have done this? I learned from me. In Michael Jackson, some people see him as an entertainer. For me, I saw, in fact, I commented, someone posted on social media about Michael Jackson yesterday or two days ago. One 
one guy is um, Line Road or is uh, they call him Catalyst, a motivational speaker. He posted something about my a clip, maybe 30 seconds. I watched and I commented and I said this man is, was in a league of his own. Because from Michael Jackson, I learned about excellence. Excellence. If you watch This Is It, one of his movies, and see what he did, how he prepared for that This Is It, that even though he didn't live to perform it. And so all of us would have come on stage that day, come to watch him and say, wow, this is a great guy, he's so talented. No, he worked very hard for it. He was practicing twice a day, morning and evening, to achieve his purpose. Again, hard work, sacrifice, discipline, to achieve his purpose, working Hard, twice a day, in the morning he goes for practice, and then he goes for practice. But the day he will come out to perform, people will say, wow, this guy is so talented. It's called second nature to him. It's so natural. No, he worked very hard to it. But, so when you are in that situation, at this level, I, you know, I was telling my kids, and I say this to my colleagues too, at this level, read as much as you can. Read so mo as much as you can. Because there will come a time in the future, even as much as you like to read, you might not have the opportunity to read. And learn from it. I learned to date, I learned from leaders. I said, what? And also, both those who have succeeded and those who have not succeeded. I want to know those who failed. Why did, how did they fail? What happened? What can I learn from it? So that when I'm faced with such situation, I know how to navigate. And by the way, issues happen every day in our life. The day Shevun invited me to this. Um, we're going to Port Harcourt because we're commissioning one of our plans. And on that trip, you might remember, might not remember, something was happening around that time in part of my corporate world. But I paused and I asked myself, what is the best way to deal with this situation? And I, I, I said, this leader, if this leader were in this circumstance, what would the leader do? If this one was, they would do this one. So I decided, again, you no know, discipline. To just discipline myself and let's set it And where are we today? It's all over. But I could have taken the wrong step at that time, you know, populist. And that would have also could have caused its own, its own consequence. So in life, let us be disciplined, focused, hardworking, make sacrifice, ready to make sacrifice. You will have challenges. You will have those moments where you ask yourself, I'm on the right track. But from your learning, reading, inspiration, etc., it's okay. It's still the right track. Let me continue. But it's also good to reassess. It might be wrong track. To reassess, I know that it's time to change course. But that discipline and being dispassionate at times can help us make the right decision. Next one. My name is Ibubi. I'm a student of RPSS Lube. R? RPSS Lube. Yobe. Lube, Lube. OK. So I actually have three questions to ask you. <laughs> voilà. So the first one. How did you balance education, like when you were still in secondary school, work, and your spiritual life with God? That's number one. And second one, if you see someone drifting, like let's say your friends, your associates, they are drifting, they are, they were, let's say they were spiritual before, but due to some circumstances, they are going away from God, their grades are falling. Should you advise this person, or should you leave them to fall, for fear of maybe they will inf influence you too, and you might eventually end up falling with them? So what should you do? So third question. So as your business life, everything that you have done so far, did you cut corners, step on toes to achieve what you have achieved today? If you did, what would you recommend for someone who is planning to get somewhere high and those kind of situations are inevitable? So Richard, who do you think are the kind of people you should actually expressly come out and tell them what is what, like step on their toes? And what are the kind of people that you think, like how should you behave in that kind of setting? Yeah. You guys, uh, they the caliber of questions uh, you guys ask here is uh, it's very, it's very, very tough. So first he says, when I was in school, you know, in uh, secondary school actually, we had what we call SU then. I don't know what <laughs> scripture union, you know, but today they call it Pentecostal. So I was a member of, uh, I was in scripture union, <laughs> scripture union person, and then we used to worship, go to class uh, in every three, two or three times a, a week, you know, time, you know, we fellowship together, you hear the word of God, etc testimonials, etc. So I was, and I was able to balance, that, uh, to balance that with academics. There's always, I believe, there's always time to do what is important uh, to us. So you will have the time to do so. The second one, uh, the answer is yes. I think if someone is close to you, I know 
when I backslid, <laughs> those days we say when backsliding, that's you were SU, you now stop, you know. I know some of my friends came to talk to me then. So the it is if you love someone and you think the person is going astray, I believe you should talk to the person. But as you speak to the person. Can you hear me? Okay. As you speak to the maybe at times when you go too close. Sorry. Hello, can you hear? Can you hear? As you speak to the which one is better? This is better. The other. <laughs> so just try, yes, cancer, but tell yourself I won't let anyone pull me down. Uh, you help to pull someone up, but instead of trying to pull you, <laughs> you move your butt. As a Christian, I, I know you fast, you pray when you want to embark on such. You say, God, this person, I want to help, you pray. And then you see also, if you're going to think the person is going to pull you down, you pull yourself up and stay focused because it's important. But I think, uh, you know, you don't want to feel guilty that you saw, you know you could have advised this person and the person, you failed to do so. So I would encourage you to. Now, in the area of business, the business world is a very tough business world. We all make mistakes in business. But you learn from your mistake and you commit to improving better. Life and like business is a, it's a journey, a marathon. Now, what advice have I made mistakes before in business? Yes, I have. Okay. Did I learn from my mistake? Yes, I learned from my mistake. And it helps you to stay further committed. Again, that discipline and that sacrifice is so critical. Most times, it's short term. When people think short term, that they make a lot of mistakes. I posted something on social media some days ago, I think on Monday, on my thread, and I was talking about partnerships. And I put there that partnerships work, and at times they fail. And one of the reasons they fail is when strange fellows come together. And that try, if you're someone like me, try to go to bed with people who think long term, like you. So at times, the people also make me same business from associations that they keep in business. You know, that's like this is your association, discipline, staying the course, being ready to make short-term sacrifice for a better future is always good for success. Now, you did ask a fourth, even though you didn't add as a fourth, that what kind of, uh, how should someone who is committed, who has great ambition, who wants to stay the course, continue? As I said here, yeah, this kind of conversation, you get inspiration from it. You read about people who have succeeded, in spite of challenges, in spite of difficulties, who have worked very difficult terrains, and indeed, a lot of people have. There, there is this. A book I would recommend to you. I don't, you, 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 you're 18, how old are you? What? What? Six. One six. Wow, I'm so impressed. And you're asking this kind of question. Well done, sky's your limit. So a book I will, uh, just note it if you have time, you read it. If you, in future, you can read it, maybe in two years. Uh, it's, um, Authenticity, leadership authenticity, you know, by Bill, Bill, I think Bill Graham. Bill, Bill was just, I'm saying this so you'll be able to find it, was CEO of Metronics in a big US company, Metronics. And uh, Bill went through some of these uh, difficulties you know, at the time of Aaron and so many things. And uh, you read this book, Authenticity, Leadership Authenticity by Bill. I can't remember his surname now, but Bill something, you'll find it uh, useful. You might not remember, you might not understand everything now. I said, I've watched it just movie over 50 times. He has about three, I've watched. But every time I keep learning. So keep reading and learning again and reading. It will help. I'm quite impressed. Well done. So we're done with that side. Let's go this side. We'll take three here and three here. One. Okay, that, let's start with the lady. The lady in glasses, one. You smiling. Okay, the lady in glass, two. The lady in black, three. And you, four. Once someone wanted, okay, oh, lady, five, okay. So we'll take five here because to give three ladies the opportunity, okay. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Eunice Okomudo, and I'm actually still waiting for admission. Your name? So, Your name? Eunice Okomudo. And my questions are first of all, while you were growing up, did you always know what you wanted to do? And um, did you know how to go about it? If not, how did you end up discovering it? And secondly, when you were coming into the line lights, when you were actually um, developing your craft and everything, and then coming amongst huge people with big statues, did you ever feel like um, imposter syndrome? Did you ever feel like you weren't meant to be there or feel this fear that, yeah, you did not deserve it? Yes, number one is uh, going out growing up. I had an uncle, my mom's brother was was a businessman, so <laughs> all we knew that businessman. <laughs> and then you see maybe a uh, Rover car, Volvo car, Mercedes, say, wow. 
I'm going to be a businessman in the future when I grow up, okay? And so that was my first aspiration, that I wanted to be a businessman. But with time, I think, you know, life shaped up. I said, you know, okay, I love to be a banker. Uh, when I was in school, I loved the way bankers dressed and everything, the way they oppress us on campus. <laughs> They were the oppressors on campus and they'd be a banker. And so my journey started from, 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 from there. But I've always, always felt that I would like to be successful in life. Okay? And so that shaped a lot of decisions, even reading economics, reading economics, student to read economics, and so many things I've done. I, 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 a lot, I think, uh, to a large extent, not as it is today, but I kind of uh, aspired to be, to be successful as defined in terms of being able to work on a business inspired from higher points and that. Now, the second question uh, you asked is, yes, when I've been in, uh, even, even, there was a time, I, that was even about 2010 or 11, no, 2000, and anyway, I can't remember the time, but every five was the FCT minister here, and the uh, justice, um, Justice, our chief judge of the federation, Ways, or chief judge of the federation, I was CEO of Standard Trust Bank, I think, or UB. And uh, Max, Max, is it called Maxwell? Maxwell, Maxwell. One is a famous um, author. Maxwell, Maxwell, yeah. Fam Maxwell, yeah, John Maxwell. So he, the two of us, they put us on stage to speak. <laughs> so, so after I listened to this, this, this human being, and when it was time for me to speak, I stammered for quite, for quite a long time. So it happens, you know, but with time, with time, with time. So again, a lesson for you all, you know. You guys, life is a journey. What is important is just commit. Tell yourself you will keep improving. You keep improving. And you get there, okay? So yeah, let me be cutting the answer short, sorry. Ne sorry, how much? Sorry, I'll take one more question. I'll answer one. Yeah, sorry. You know, I can go on and on and on. I'm so inspired by and excited about Let's one more. I need to respect time because I'm quite impressed that you guys work on time. I need to respect the time. One more. Maybe we can hear you. Okay, go ahead. You have the mic. Go on. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Teaser. Um, I'm done with school as well. And it's a follow-up question to what my brother asked formerly about foundation. So I'm a sport enthusiast. I love sport very well. And... Um, uh, you started your foundation in 2010. As of 2010, you have about 20 something branches across Africa. And for a young person who just got out of school, no job, and I have a plan of you no, know, I've been following you, I have a similar plan in what you're doing with your foundation. You didn't explain detailedly how the challenges, you know, in other climates, you have grants where you have something in mind, you go there, you get it. But in this our country today, we don't have similar thing. So um, what are the, Thing, the detailed thing. No, let, let me, I will encourage you to go to Tony Lelu Foundation uh, find, um, website and you can see what we do. What you say we don't have in this environment, we do. That's what we do at Tony Lelu Foundation. We commit, we, every year, we assist 1,000 young Africans. We don't know you, you don't know us. You apply, we'll see your business idea. It makes sense. We'll take you and give you $5,000 non refundable seed capital. That's a grant, non refundable, to help you do what you want to do. And not only do we do so, we now have partners from all over the world who support what we do. So we do our own 1,000 every year. All our partners like European Union, EU, they supported 3,500 or thereabouts. Uh, United Nations Development Program, they support some. ICI, ICPC, ICRC, they support some. So indeed, such, we, we go to our foundation and read about it. I take the last question. Read it, please. It reads, sir, please, what were the mistakes you made? That's the first one. And the second one says, who were your role models? I think role models, I talked about some, not longer. <laughs> but for my, but my first role model, my parents, I, you know, I, I learned a lot from, from them. And then I have people I admire, like Michael Jackson, you know. <laughs> so not for the entertainment, the man. You know, everyone says this is a talented man. But as you read about him, you know that he developed himself. He made this. He said, I will be. In fact, it was on the show with his brother. He just said, henceforth, I'll do this. If I have it here, I just watch it two days ago. I'll be the best. And he did that. That Michael can just come on stage and stay in one place. Everybody will be screaming. It didn't just happen that. Anyway, so Michael And then Steve Jobs, I talked about it from nowhere. 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 This man invented all these things that, you know, has even opened our eyes and has created Huge thing. The first man, the first, the, 
He founded, uh, founded Apple, and the first company in the world to cross a trillion dollar in market cap was Apple. And this happened even in his death. So how more, to me, those are unusual human beings. Some of our people are alive, growing business every day. Not, he, he has come, his time over in his in past, his company is still doing well. Again, almost 2.7 trillion now, market cap. So he's a great man. And then one more point he she raised. Failures have had, as I said, you know, I said before, we, we made mistakes. But what's important, young men and ladies, we should not glorify or celebrate our mistakes, etc. But let's learn from our mistakes. Let's learn from it. When you make mistakes, okay, just introspect. Go step, take one step back and say, why did I make this? I, till today I do it. You can make mistakes. Even hiring, I can hire someone, a wrong person. I'll go back. I say, where did I get it wrong? This, you learn from it. You make wrong business decisions. You close down some businesses. So you go back and say, why? Was it sentiment? Was it emotion? Was it what led to it? You even, you even do certain things that create embarrassment to you. You know, you say, why did I do this? So we do make mistakes. But what's important? Learn, do a self-examination, detach, go, and learn from it and say to yourself, it will not happen Again, that is how we get better progress. Life is a journey. That is it. You keep getting better and better, even at 60. Yes. Thank you so very much, sir. I think, let's give him another round of applause. Thank you so very much, sir. I have jotted and jotted. And one Sorry, I those that couldn't answer their questions, if you follow me on social media, ask the question I, on LinkedIn or Facebook anywhere, I will respond to it on Instagram. Thank you very much. Let me quickly share this quote. It's a good circumstance today. You must not be one in the future. You can future it, you can future in it. Indeed, Mr. Illumelo is indeed humble. My father used to tell me that humility is the hallmark of greatness. A round of applause for this sage of our time. We're going to be having musical interlude. While they come up, you know what Timmy Dabukolo said? He said, Elumelu, go be your friend. Amen, amen, amen. Aren't you saying amen? You don't want him to be your friend? So a round of applause for him again. We'll soon be out of this hall. I want to tell you that once we leave here, we'll be doing red carpet session with our guest speakers. And then, we'll, before then, we'll be having the Father's blessings. But right about now, we'll have musical interlude. And then, we'll have appreciation notes. about now I have questions for Mrs. Dorotha. He says, please, Mrs. Dorotha, you said if you have a role model, you will do what famous Anita, are you here? I can't see your handwriting. Famous. <laughs> they said doctors don't have good handwriting. Famous, are you here? Please can you come and read this? I can't see this, please. Another question for for Ms. Dorothy, when you are given an avenue to take up responsibility, do what you do. The next question says, character or behavior 